right, so as you can see, I got the four parts listed here, and I got a little presentation I put together and have some information um, that I'd like to share with you guys. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to a ask. And also, you know, what makes a presentation good is having your input. So, you know, I'd like it once in a while when I ask some questions for some of you to, you know, speak up. Don't, don't be afraid if you don't know the answer, but you're taking a guess and it's not right. You know, no one's going to chastise you for not having the right answer. But the only way you're going to learn is you got to participate. And if you don't have the time or the access to a local school in your area, and this is the closest thing you have, then take full advantage of it. Be part of the class instead of just sit there and watch. Otherwise, you guys can watch videos all day and learn this stuff on videos. But if you don't ask questions, that question in the back of your head, why did you do that? Why does this do that? How does it do this? Ask these questions. It's the only way I'm going to be able to help you guys out. Um, so anyways, recovery refrigerant and like the procedures and tools for recovery and evacuating. Um, first of all, like I said, I talked about some of these things. I wanted to go a little bit more in depth into some of these items, pros and cons, and uh, what you would use and why you would use it. To recover refrigerant, most refrigerators don't have a way to set your gauges or connect your gauges to the system for recovering the refrigerant. So you're going to need some sort of valve that you can connect to the system that's going to allow you to connect your gauges. Uh, I have two uh, that my techs normally use, which is, first of all, a bullet piercing valve we have in the top. And this has Allen screws on the top. The three on the outside take it completely apart, and the tube goes through the middle here, and you tighten them down. The center Allen screw is the actual piercing valve. So once you tighten down the three, you tighten down the, the center one, and it pierces a hole right through the pipe. Now, we can't really use this on the steel tubing that you'll find on a condenser or refrigerator. Uh, it will work on aluminum, but I don't recommend doing it because once you pierce a hole in a pipe, sometimes it, you cannot you know, seal it back up. You, normally, we go to something called a stem valve when we're charging the system, and I'll show them in the video. Now, this valve here, if you look on the outside of the box, it says for 1 quarter inch, 5 sixteenths, and 3 eighths inch tubing. Most refrigerators are 1 quarter and 5 sixteenths inch diameter uh, tubing on the suction line. 1 quarter is usually the discharge line. And so this valve will work on all three size tubings. And these two pieces right here, they go in the bottom piece of this valve so that if you're using a real small tube, if you're using a real small tube, you use the thickest spacer here. If you go into 5 6 inch tubing, you use the medium size spacer. If you, if you go to 3 8 tubing, you don't use any spacer at all. Um, you only need a couple of these because you can reuse them over and over again. The thing is, is you don't use them for charging a refrigerant system. If you use one of these valves to charge a refrigerator, you cannot remove it without losing all your charge. So these are mainly used to access the system, to check the pressures, as well as to um, recover the refrigerant. So this is recovery and checking system pressures in, in the refrigerator. Now, the, the set on the bottom there looks like a pair of, everybody calls them vice grips, or they're, they're locking pliers. They're sort of new to the sealed system. They've been around now 10, 15 years, but they haven't been around that long. And right here where my arrow is on the mouse, that is a little piercing uh, uh, piece. So when you lock it down onto the tube, it'll pierce its own hole. It's very important that you make sure that this rubber seal is intact and that this piercing point is not damaged. You can buy replacement ones, and I recommend if you buy this tool at that time, buy uh, a couple of extra just in case you're doing a job and, and this is the tool you use and, and this seal is damaged or the piercing part after a period of time is no longer sharp and can't pierce the tube. Um, 
refrigerant gauges. Uh, as it says here, there are different types of gauges used and the prices vary. Choosing a set of gauges and a refrigerant type and how you tend on using them are important. Uh, do your research before uh, you purchase gauges. A $40 pair of gauges, believe it or not, does the same thing as a $300 pair of gauges. Now, you don't want to buy the cheapest one because I've seen handles strip on them and I've seen uh, different things go wrong with them. Uh, but you don't need to buy the most expensive one. If you look at the one on the far right, it's digital. Um, they're very expensive. They work, but they have drawbacks. Do you really need a digital set of gauges if you can read the analog needle on the others? No. And they're battery operated. Could you imagine being on a job and in the middle of your job the battery dies on your gauges? Now your gauge don't work. So having digital gauges are good, but you got to make sure you have batteries. Make sure the battery's not corroding in the back of that unit. Um, it, it seems like to me it'd be easier to damage them because they're digital. It's like dropping your cell phone. Um, so there are pros and cons to it. I have three sets of gauges up there. Which one of these gauges, if you look at them, are not really designed for a refrigerator? Starting left to right. This one here is number one. This one's number two. And this one's number three. Out of those three sets of gauges, does anybody know which set is really not designed for a refrigerator? Now we got recovery machines. I just went online and searched recovery machines and there was a whole bunch out there. And if you look at the picture on the left, that whole setup came together. It gave you hoses, it gave you gauges, and if you if you look and I want to move these pictures around you can see these fittings here these are the automobile fittings so they would connect to the system or connect to your hoses and take your hoses and make them work on cars as well um, so you got hoses you got a set of refrigerant gauges you have a recovery tank I don't know why they would show this tank unless you're recovering uh, a specific gas in there but um, they give you an extra tank here. Your recovery machine, they have a dryer filter. I'll answer your question in a minute about the bag. Uh, they have a dryer filter here, which is filtering everything that's coming into the recovery machine. So you're protecting your recovery machine as well as the side glass. Refrigerants and reading the model and serial number plate. I have a few different units here. Samsung in the upper left hand corner. Electrolux and Frigidaire even though they're the same company uh, let's take a look at them here the important thing that I wanted to point out is right here is the refrigerant I'm sorry it's up here the refrigerant that's in the system it tells you here that the system has R600A in it and it's 70 grams a lot of refrigerators especially these foreign made ones Samsung LG and other brands they don't necessarily tell you the ounces, they tell you the grams. Uh, and I want to point that out when I talk about refrigerant scales. When you're charging it back up, you have to use a scale to weigh the refrigerant in. You need to know what is the charge. And you have to have a scale that will either measure grams or ounces. If they give you both reading, a scale that measure ounces will work fine. But if they give you only grams, you need to make sure that your scale for use for sealed system is capable of measuring grams. And not only that, but you see 70 grams is only equal to just under three ounces of Freon. So grams are very, very small units. If you look here on the right hand side, this is also 600A. It only uses 1.41 ounces of refrigerant or 40 grams. When you're saying 1.41, when you're getting to the 4.1, that's a very, very finite amount. And bigger scales don't always get that accurate. Reading them in the hundreds. So, so the fours in the tens, the ones are in the hundreds. So grams here, because they're so small, they're a lot more 
it's a lot more easier to get an accurate measurement of refrigerant in the system. Now, if you look here on the left, we have 4.75 ounces of 134A, and they give you the grams here. If you look at a lot of older refrigerators, they never actually had grams. They were always ounces, and that's all you saw. Um, and some of the new refrigerators that are R600A, um, they would only have grams and not ounces. This is the first few times that I've seen where both ounces and grams were shown. Now, some of my technicians only use one scale for both refrigerants, but sometimes that refrigerant uh, scale is so big, it's bulky and it's not as accurate for these smaller amounts. You almost use like, like a cooking scale, and I got pictures of it, um, to measure these smaller amounts. I'm here. Uh, as a matter of fact, here they are. Um, so the scales on the bottom, those are the ones that most technicians typically use. And I just did a search to show you the differences in prices. You don't need to get the most expensive one. The nice thing about this yellow one is it's more shockproof if you drop it. But some of these others come with cases. I mean, 65 bucks, you know, that's not a bad deal. If you drop and break it, you can buy another one and you're still less than the $160 that this one is. So, you know... You don't need the most expensive, but some of these here, because they're so big, they don't get down to the smaller ounces. If you look at the ones at the top here, uh, I bought a bunch of these for my guys between $10 and $20. And these are the types of scales that you would put on that Sub-Zero if it's 600A. And you can, you can put that at anywhere you want, and it can measure refrigerant. And it's not going to support the tank of a 134A unit, but... If you can retrofit one of those small 134A automotive cans, it would be a lot easier to use one of these small scales with one of those small 134A charging cans. Let me see if I can find one. Um, I don't know if you have seen them. Give me a second here. Um, they have these tanks here real small. And you just buy the adapter. You can use these tanks. Well, this is 123. 123. I was looking for 134A. Um, let's see if I can find the 134A ones. Um, like like this one right here in the, in the right hand side here, or this one right here. They have 134A in here. They have 12 ounces. A 16 ounce style of charge. Maybe I should have put it that way. Like oh, here we go, right here. But look at the cost of it. But this is an alternative to uh, the scale as well as the, um, like for, for that sub-zero question you had. I'm going to zoom in on it. You fill this up with refrigerant from your Freon tank. What you do is you pull a vacuum on it, and, and then you connect it to your tank. You turn your tank upside down, and it starts filling up from the bottom with ounces of Freon. You can see the numbers in the picture there. I'm sorry, it's, it's about as big as I can get that image. And all you do is you just let the Freon out. If you need 8 ounces and it's at 10, for example, uh, then, well, let's say the two lines. Let's say it's got 12 ounces in it and you have to put five five and a half ounces in. So it'll go one, two, three, four, five and a half between those two black marks. And this is how much Freon it was holding before you started. And when the Freon drops to this point right here to the bottom line, you would close your gauges and you knew five and a half ounces went in. You don't need a scale. So these things are really nice if you're doing a lot of work on, on charging refrigerators and you just don't want to carry that scale in that 30-pound tank in everybody's home. One of these things here, you just fill them up and go into the house with that, charge it, take it back. and It's only about a foot and maybe 14, 15 inches long.